broadcasting high atop of the Florida Peninsula at 108 feet. This is Alpha Mike. And that's the station, Raider Cop Nation. Episode number 92. Heads up, subject has a camera or a mic. Part two. Well, wait a minute, Alpha. The first uh, uh, title had nothing about a mic. And all of a sudden you threw a mic in there. Yeah. I. This is why it's called part two. This is a development that is happening all over the country. Law enforcement is slowly getting geared into how to defend against it. And it is slow in coming. The question that I have is why? Why is it slow in coming? So we'll look at a little bit more details of what we discussed in the first episode. And then we'll, we'll go into how I feel the, an agency needs to approach this. And then we'll wrap it off uh, with um, some issues as far as um, expectation of, of the public and how that works. So I'll explain it all. Don't get all excited. We've got plenty of time. Now, before we get to that, of course, you can always go to RaiderCopNation.com to see our website. Remember, you scroll all the way down, the icons pop up. On Instagram, as I announced on our last episode, we have a new Instagram account for Raider Cop Nation, and that is Raider Cop Podcast. All one word, small letters, and of course, a little at sign in front. And we'll pop up and you can see some pictures of um, the podcast and, and that kind of stuff. Not a whole lot, but... At least uh, we keep you busy on a steady basis. Remember, Raider Cop Nation, we do an array of things. From police training to police expectations to public expectations of police to crisis intervention of people with mentally ill that are mentally ill, firearms, use of force, Blah, 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 blah. We could be here forever. That's why when you come on the show, we have a, 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 a bunch of shows. Now, you know, our podcast is formatted in five formats, okay? Number one, or oh, wait a minute, before we do that, I'll have our translator come out and do the number count. Okay. First one. Oh, no. Think out of the box series. It's about leadership. It's how agencies and their leaders should not be thinking inside the box because we do things the way we do it because that's how it is here and that's how we do it. On the other hand, we should always explore other avenues, always ready to shift gears and re-engage. Too often, law enforcement is on one steady mode and the readjusting from one thing to another sometimes is very slow and very demanding. So that's what that series does. It makes you think out of the box. Our next number. Dva. Train up series. Train up if you're either you're an active law enforcement officer, you're retired, things are being done a little bit differently, so you want to catch up to speed, or you're just a citizen and you like to know how people are, uh, police officers and correction officers are being trained nowadays, or you're thinking about getting into law enforcement. This is what this series does. It gives you a bunch of tools for you to put in your tool chest. Now, remember... There is no such thing as wasted training. Any training session that you go to, once you sit down 
and you listen to the entire course, hopefully you're taking notes and having an open mind to what they're saying. Believe you me, by the time that training session is over, you've got some new tools. And by the way, that was Russian. I don't know if we're allowed to use that. Sang. This episode or format that we have is called Sidebar. It's basically about how the nutty left, the wackos, the socialists, the communists, whatever you want to call them, they have deteriorated law enforcement in this country at every turn. They have placed within the ranks of many agencies hacks. Started small, started growing. Next thing you know, they've got four stars and they're in charge. There are certain signs to look for. For example, a chief of police that openly advocates for gun control. Hello, you're here to enforce the laws, not change them. So therefore, we've created Sidebar. And it tells you, it tells you everything you need to know about this sick sick, sick agenda that these individuals have. Alba. The Roll Call Series. The Roll Call Series is the day-to-day operations to law enforcement, from patrol to conducting investigations to giving depositions. Every function that they have to do on an everyday basis, how to do it better. Of course, to help us achieve this, we have superhero co-hosts that are active and of superior rank that they can help us making sure that we know that we're doing it the right way. Fünf. And lastly, the Wise Guy series. You guys like a good crime story, and if it has to do with organized crime, you're that more in tuned. So we bring you once in a while, a show on the mafia, the 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 Italian La Costa Nostra, the Russian ma- and so forth, and we keep that and we name that the Wise Guy series. So as you can see, we got enough of a platform to keep you busy, hundreds and hundreds of shows, and um, you can you can. Never leave here for 50 minutes or so and say, I I didn't get it. I didn't learn anything. You're going to learn something. So that's why you're here. Our key element is to mentor. We mentored, well, at least I mentored when I was active, and I continue to mentor today as retired. Now, it's time for our leadership quote. Of the week. The pessimist complains about the wind. The optimist expects it to change. The leader adjusts the sail. John Maxwell. And that's very fitting. To, to adjust the sail. That's what a leader does. And that's what we want to talk about today on um, our second part of this series, Heads Up, Subject Has a Camera and a Microphone. Because I am witnessing hundreds of videos. And, and now somebody asked me, are you actually watching everyone? I scan through them, folks. Please, uh, you know. It's, it's bad enough. I've got to even research this. It would be horrifying if I had to sit there and watch all of them. Some I do watch the whole thing because I, I it, it's just so freaking horrible. I say, it's got to get better from here. There's, there's no way. You, you've got to grow. Something's got to happen. So I do end up sometimes seeing them. But there's bad on both sides. Not only in the uniform ranks, there's also bad in um, some of these auditors. Now, as we told you in our first episode, they are First Amendment auditors, and they are testing the First Amendment at every angle they they can find. 
According to my research, there really is no organized effort, and that might be one of the reasons why there are so many problems um, in in officers or law enforcement kind of uh, subjecting to this. But we're going to get to all that in a minute. I want you to breathe. Breathe in. Breathe out. Okay, that's it. Relax. We need to relax. Now, just to recap a little bit about my horrifying experience with my new purchase, Apple Watch. Yeah, I know you guys got a good giggle out of it last week. Well, I did uh, attempt to file my claim um, as um, an insurer of T-Mobile slash Apple Care, and I called um, the Apple store in my neck of the woods. You have to set an appointment. It's real geeky, and uh, then you talk to. And let me tell you, and it's to me. I don't know. I, I, I might be just old-fashioned, but it was so freaking confusing when you get there. But anyway, I have to travel all the way down uh, past the downtown area where uh, where I'm at. And uh, it's a, quite a ride, you know, an almost 40-minute drive for me. And I go down there. It's in this uh, mall, find park and walk around, look at all the weirdos. Finally get to the Apple store. There's a billion people in there running around like ants. No structure whatsoever. You see some, you got the employees with their shirts, so you kind of distinguish them from the public. But everybody's doing something and carrying something and buying something and selling something. But there's nowhere to go. So I go all the way towards, I go inside the store all the way towards the end. Like, you know, normal people do. They have a counter there. You know, that's what I'm thinking. Must be a cash register or something up there. Nothing. I'm walking around. I go, who the hell do I talk to? So I just talked to some lady there, and I said, I have an appointment at such and such time. Oh, you're supposed to check in at the front. Really? I missed that freaking detail. Whatever happened to the customer's always right. Well, anyway, she took out her phone. I'll help you. Boom, boom, boom. She goes, last name. I give her a last name. Then she wants to proceed to guess. Is this your first name? Is that your first name? Why don't you just freaking ask me my first name? So anyway, um, she gets somebody to help me. Here comes this clown. He sits me down. <clears throat> and he, um, I show him uh, the box. I show him the phone. And he goes, um, do you have uh, the contract from your T-Mobile? I said, yeah. He goes, well, you're not covered. Uh, so uh, we would have to charge you the full amount and I go okay well this is news to me because they're the ones that send me down here but anyway um, I tell him how much would the full amount be <clears throat> and he proceeded to tell me like $350 or around there it could be $349 three, whatever the hell he said but a $350 this is uh, like a $500, $580 watch so the screen is three fifty. You do the math. So anyway, after I chuckled in his freaking face with a business plan like that, these people are a train wreck. So I left. But uh, on the way out, I did see a T-Mobile store. So I went in there, asked them, and I go, "Hey, look, buddy, I brought this phone. I'm at the T-Mobile store. I brought this uh, a watch." A couple of days ago, and this is what happened to me. And I go upstairs to Apple. I'm going to file my claim. And they go, hey, you don't got no Apple care. Get out of here. You got to pay. So he looks at it and goes, well, it's not. It's, it's, it's activated, but you don't have a bill. Ta, 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 ta. And uh, he goes, but guess what? I'll go with you. I go, you're going to go upstairs with me to the Apple people? We're going to go up to the kingdom? He said, yeah. So up we went to the palace. We entered the Apple palace. And we spoke to somebody else now. Because they're running around. There's like nine, 90 of them. And uh, he, you know, obviously he's a T-Mobile guy. So he's got a little T-Mobile shirt to the Apple guy. And it was an instant connection. If I would have walked in there, they would walk right past me. But they started talking about my account and all this and that. And he's got this and that. And so the guy goes, look, we really don't do this at the store. Hmm. But you'd probably fare better doing it online because 
Apple sends you the box. You throw the watch in there, and you send it back to Apple, and then they repair it, and they send it right back. You don't have to leave. And I thought that was a great idea, but that's not what they told me over at T-Mobile. But anyway, that's another thing. So I, you know, I would have wasted all my time and gas. So I chose to go with that route. So I thanked everybody profusely, the T-Mobile guy for coming upstairs and getting air, and the Apple guy from the Apple Palace for giving me a little bit more knowledge. Ran out of there, went home. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, ran out of there, went home. And I proceeded to do the online insurance claim. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, so two hours into it, we're arguing back and forth. You don't have, you do have. I don't know what, what a three, what is it, three fifty plan or three sixty plan? The T Mobile calls it, but this is different. But that's not your insurance. That's my insurance. But you can use my insurance to help you in your insurance, and we can get all the insurances together, and maybe we can fix the phone. Or the, or the watch. A freaking mess. So anyway, at the end of the day, after a horrifying uh, event online with Apple, with serial numbers and click here and your iPhone and identify who you are and what planet you came from, this goes on and on and on with them. Uh, they finally tell me, you, you don't have the Apple Care uh, insurance, so can't help you, buddy. So... I go, well, would you hold on? Because I need to call T-Mobile. So I held on for like five minutes, and they started whining. They did tell me a joke, though. But uh, what do you, and this is the Apple joke. What do you call money in space? Starbucks. Anyway, they thought it was funny, and then they disconnected with me. But I did get the T-Mobile guy to get on. I said, look, we took care of everything. We hooked you up. You got the insurance. That's, listen, I'm not going to go into it any further. But this has been a nightmare. A nightmare. But it's going to get fixed. Don't worry about it. All right, so that's my excitement. As you chuckle on my misery, we are ready for the main event. <laughs> Police, where are your badges? Badges? We ain't got no badges. We don't need no badges. I don't have to show you any stinking badges. Don't be alarmed, folks. That is not a recording from a First Amendment audit. No. But it sure sounds like it sometimes. And this is why we're here. The First Amendment ordered, as we discussed before, they're testing the constitutionality of the First Amendment going into public uh, lobby areas, public buildings, and so forth. Some of them are very good. Some of them are so, so good. And some of them are pure horrible. Now, that also goes for the law enforcement end of the deal also which are pretty bad at times. But they're testing how far basically they can get away with. And um, it is something that has to be adjusted in the law enforcement world, and we'll discuss that in a moment. The other thing that they like to do is also test the constitutionality to free speech by basically, let's say, going to a city forum when they have... Uh, um, certain free speech for citizens to talk about a specific subject, they'll run up to the microphone and try to challenge the system by talking about anything under the sun that's not the agenda item and then say, you're trying to um, stop me from my First Amendment right of freedom of speech. So 
there's several effects going here. Several objectives are on the table. Number one, some of them, not all of them, some of them are trying to profit from this. And this is why in their conversation with law enforcement, two minutes into it, they stick out their hands and go, arrest me then, arrest me. Because that's that's the fish they're trying to hook. And an example of that is out in Colorado Springs, uh, a First Amendment auditor was filming police cars going in and out of the station. Officers approached the subject and immediately give me the ID. If you don't give me ID, you're under arrest. Blah, blah, blah. Next thing you know, click, click in the back of the car. And uh, their approach was horrible. And, you know, everything around it was horrible. Well, the city of Colorado Springs had to dish out $41,000 for that mistake. And around the country, they're paying some undisclosed amounts for something that should have been taught in their academy, constitutional law. So what happened? Well, I've been on the job for 13, 14, 20 years. Uh Uh-huh. Well, you, while you're trying to figure out what happened, I can tell you what happened. No updates, my friend. Zero. And that's the problem. You can't try, train somebody on a law standard that's 20 years old and never give a refresher course. And there has to be a better objective on how the agencies want to deal with this. So let's keep on moving along here and looking at some other aspects and some of the police responses are good. Some of the police officers have been well trained and you can kind of pick it up within 30 seconds of these videos, how they approach, how they uh, speak to the, to the subject or the first amendment auditor. Let's get it right. And um, the dialogue back and forth. Some are plain horrible. We'll discuss in a second which ones are pretty good and which ones are bad, not by agency, but uh, let's just say by seniority points. And and then, well, there are some that you got the deer in the headlights. They're just like, what? No, no, you got to show me ID. They don't know what the next line's going to be. They don't know. They're really struggling with it. And then, then you got the classic one. He tells you, no, you see, you can't film here because this is a restricted area. And that guy turns into this. Next. Occupation. Stand up philosopher. What? Stand up philosopher. I coalesce the vapor of human experience into a viable and logical comprehension. Oh, a bullshit artist. That's right, folks. And I can tell you one thing about that. Ain't nobody got time for that. No siree, because that makes our agency look horrible. But they're out there, and it's pretty sad, to, to be honest with you. So we, the bad guy never has to, and, and I'm in theory saying the bad guy, I don't want to offend any of our First Amendment auditors. But not everybody is an auditor. Some are just clowns with cameras that are trying to see how this works. So let's keep that in mind. So it's a two-way street about uh, who's, who sucks here. So uh, as we spoke in our last episode The First Amendment Auditors Movement is not necessarily organized. It's more of a concept. And they've gone out and they've exploited it to whole hell and as much as they can get away with. Uh, I saw a couple of them that were just totally outrageous going into uh, the city attorney's office and opening doors and just filming people. I mean... It, it leaves you to believe. And then this these fools well, got kind of like thrown out of there. And then the next day they went back. How 
there has to be a standard to how do you film in public. Now, I know that our auditors right now are gasping for air and saying he's trying to put restrictions. There's no restrictions. But there has to be a difference between a person that's really trying to do what they say they are opposed to just uh, let me start trouble. I saw one where they're having a, uh, an all-out pushing and shoving and uh, you're going to, you know, pretty much say it was a fight with a security guard. You know, it drops the camera on the floor. That was awful. That, that was disgusting. And then all of a sudden, uh, uh, good looking out, they start dapping each other. Uh, they didn't press charges on him. He didn't press a uh, circle jerk at the end. For a freaking joke. But the bottom line is that there's there's an an approach that the officers have to take and they have to have, in other words, here's what I'm trying to say. You can't come out, and the first thing out of your mouth is, it's against our policy for you to film here. Because policy cannot trump, and if you're a leftist, cover your ears, trump the law. It can't. It can't. It can't. It can't. So, therefore, y- you've got to come to some sense of reality of how do you approach this and how do you talk? Some officers are just pissed off beyond all, all, all reason. And, but uh, some of this thing might be bordering on uh, nuisance laws. And, of course, law enforcement doesn't want to get involved in it. The ACLU basically gives you certain protocols to follow, and they basically say, Hey, look, the best policy that you can put forward is just allow them to do what they are asking to do and ignore them. That's what the ACLU says. So, you know, I read and they came up with some other things, you know, as long as they're not um, uh, threatening the general public, you know, stuff like that. But basically the theme of though the premise of what the ACLU is coming up with is just let them do what they say they want to do because they can do it. Okay. So then I said to myself, well, I've got an idea, and I'll share you, share with you that at the, at the end. Privacy laws. Everybody, all the civilians are saying, you can't film me. And it's usually the older ones. I don't want you to film me. Don't put me on camera. Oh, I can't put you on camera, but you should, you know. Uh, I can do what I want to do. And it goes back and forth. And it becomes a sideshow. And I think it's, you can't really force the public to be educated in this. But if you're going to be an auditor, uh, again, some do an excellent job. Don't get me wrong. They really know how to how to handle the public. Some are just freaking horrible. So one guy started just using profanity at somebody. Right off the bat. Guy goes, what are you doing? And he's trying to F you. What are you business? <laughs> you know, come on. You got to draw the line somewhere, okay? Civil conversation is, is, is warranted sometimes. So not to make it more complex than what it is, here's some of the recommendations that I feel agencies can benefit tremend- tremendously. Number one. I'm not going to go to the translation. I'm going to just do this in English. I'm sure even our Im- illegal immigration friends can can catch on. Number one, in-service training for law enforcement personnel. Not only at the academy level, but in the in-service, in-service level. Any changes to law should be integrated in their next mandatory in-service and the course could be given for less than an hour because it's an update. Um, Or the agency can go with a memorandum and if they do choose to go with a memorandum that has to go departmental wide and of course the officer has to sign off on them. Basically there has to be that memorandum should be detailed. Don't make a vague memorandum and send 
cops out to go enforce it. Cops are very literal, literal people. And if you don't tell them what to do, even though they kind of understand what you want them to do, guess what? They're not going to do it because you didn't tell me to do it. So to, to get away from that childish behavior, that exists. I know it. I witnessed it for 27 years. You want to make sure that that memorandum is very spelled out. But I would rather go with in-service training. One hour, basically what the laws are, maybe some scenario-based training in that too so they could see uh, how to approach a, ca- a guy with a camera, how to interact with them, positioning distance and stuff like that, and how important that is, okay? So that's my first recommendation. My second recommendation is agency should invite to create to create the curriculum. Of course, their trainers are going to put the stuff together. The agency lawyer, hopefully that the agency has one, if it's a small agency, then they should be networking with the state police and see what they can provide as far as legal guidance for the curriculum. And I would go as far as inviting the ACLU. Now, before the cops want to turn me off and, and, and talk bad behind, behind my back, you don't know what he's talking about, freaking guys preaching about the ACLU. I read what they say about the First Amendment auditors. It's very vague in itself also. But basically what they're saying is leave them alone. Well, I want them to come on board because you don't want to run from these people. You want to work with these people. So now this looks less of a hit. And uh, it will look good. Uh, not that you're doing performances, but it does look good if you you do invite them to sit down and come up with some curriculum. That's all. It's not going to hurt, okay? They're not going to change you. They're not going to make you wear a pink uniform. But they are going to give you some uh, some criticism maybe. But you you gotta you gotta go with the flow here. All right. Number three, for our chiefs of police out there, reconstruct your lobby area. Hello, McFly. This thing on. Reconstruct your lobby area. Okay. I saw one where at night the lobby kind of you you can open the front door, the second door, but everything else is locked. You got a bunch of big windows. Well, behind the the main window is a dispatcher. So you got that during the day, it's a receptionist's desk. And at night, the receptionist is gone, of course. So the only person there is the dispatcher hiding behind some computer screens. And they're yelling through the little hall, hello, I know you can hear me. I know you can hear me. The most ridiculous thing I could ever see. So there's there has to be some ingenuity to this reconstruct the areas that you don't want them to see. I saw another video where as soon as you walk into the lobby area, there's a fishbowl type of reception. The officer's sitting back there. I guess he's on timeout. Either has an injury or he doesn't play well with others, so they got him in the fishbowl. But behind them is a bunch of television uh, monitors, uh, camera monitors. Well, they get into a pissing match with the guy. Well, you can't see what we're doing and all this. And, uh, you know, it's kind of resolved towards the end. But if, if you don't want them to see it, wh- why is it in public forum? So it's just stupidity one-on-one. So, again, this is a lack of leadership, a lack of supervision from the chiefs. They will profess one thing, but when it comes to putting dollars into it, you know, training – if you're a chief and you've and the, and the mayor or whoever is in charge of you says, I need you to make some budget cuts for next year, money's tight. First thing that goes up in flames is training. First thing. The first thing. Why? Because it just, that's the way it is. So reconstruct your lobby areas. And whatever's a restricted area, and it could be a restriction. I mean, obviously, if you're taking out prisoners out of a police station, you want that to be a restricted area because 
somebody might come and try to hurt the bad guy. You know what I'm saying here? Are you following the script? Okay. So that's got to be restricted because you do have a duty to protect the bad guy you just arrested. So mark him, label him, restricted. Now, now don't put restricted all over the building act stupid. Reconstruct, put restricted, okay? Put locks on doors if you don't want people to open them. But you got to do something. All right, your approach is very important in your training. Officers got to know what my scenario is I'm looking at. And if I'm looking at a guy with a camera and all this other stuff, in law enforcement, you're taught one valuable lesson. This is a little sneak preview to our show coming up next. What will hurt an officer or kill an officer most likely is not a dirty look. It's not the lens of the camera. It's not a a quick mouth individual. It's hands. Well, he's holding a camera so I could see his hands. So that lessens the threat level. Not completely, but it, it does relax the atmosphere. There's still some other things we have to do. A lot of these videos, I, I noticed a lot of officers very uptight, pissed off, pissed off at the at the world. They got they got that call, and you know you ask a guy for something, you don't even let him respond. Let me get your license. Let me get it now. You know that kind of thing. So, approaches is needs to be implemented in your training. Approach, you know, we talk about our defensive stance, our FY stance, and all that other stuff. But there has to be an approach, okay? Body language, okay? 93% of body lang- of language is spoken body language. In other words, unspoken words, 93%. It tells a story. So if, if I'm asking you, what are you doing here? What's your purpose here? And they tell you, you know, you know, none of your business and all this. And you're rolling your eyes. The rolling of your eyes is telling a story. Okay? Crossing your arms is telling a story. Oh, no, and now I can't stand the way I want to stand. I'm just saying the approach has to be implemented in the training. <laughs> okay, number five. Am I up to number five? I lose my own county here. Number five, work with the state attorney. The county, city, state, town, attorneys, whatever applies to you. And um, and groups like the ACLU, we, th- we throw them back in there on reasonable conduct. Now, I know that there is no law talking about reasonable conduct. But the courts at one point will look at reasonable conduct in a trial, you know. Uh, He banged on the window until he cracked it because he said he had uh, every right to be there. He was a citizen. It's not reasonable. So I'm not saying that the reasonable standard they create will be that of the subject, but it should be a guideline to officers for their training. So what's reasonable? Because a lot of these officers is just lost. And, and as soon as the auditor picks up that the officer has that, that look in his face, you know, the deer in the headlights, that's it. They challenge him with something more difficult, and they're lost. So we'll throw that in for shits and giggles. All right, number six, our unions, police groups, <clears throat> they need to start working with town, city, uh, county, state, federal, Whatever applies the legislation. You know, the the legislators, especially the ones in Washington, they don't do anything. So we have a little issue here when it comes to how to perceive this law. So a little bit more guidance, because there's a lot of federal institutions that are being affected too. Like the VA, the big one with the VA, everybody's... Oh, it's like it's like an exorcism. Everybody's rolling their eyes and twisting their heads. So when the courts decided this, 
but there was no guidance from legislators. So the legislators, well, hello, when you hear something like this, you know, that the, the court system just announced this, you need to, to piggy bank on that. And I'm not saying do away with law, but make a little bit more sound. Because let's be real, folks. This is a great step for a terrorist. Couldn't you see that? With the beard and the turban on his head with the camera talking about public right. Huh? Come on. So let's be let's be smart here. Remember, we buried a whole lot of firefighters and cops in New York City. Let's be smart. Okay? But so the legislators and, and, and our police unions do a good job in that in that aspect. Not restricting, we're building. And uh and that's it. You know, I'm not I'm not gonna hit uh kill a dead horse with this. It is what it is. I think about uh in the second part of my research for this podcast, twenty minutes into it, I was done. Why? Because I was just seeing the same rep- I look at things in categories and um in elements. And I said, okay, the approach they answer back. They go back and forth. It's starting to look the same each video. I've reached the uh, the level of stupidity to um, to to look any further. So, does it have a fix? Yes. Is it an easy fix? Of course not, because you're dealing with people that are using their heads to manipulate the system, and that's what they'll do. They will manipulate the system. So. Agencies have to be willing to change, twist, get ready for the next battle. We discussed this. <clears throat> now, I'm going to put on some uh, specific uh, YouTube videos for you to look at. And I'll explain which ones they are as we wrap this up. <clears throat> the first one, I'm going to put down the group that, in my opinion, via my research were the worst subjects in dealing with First Amendment auditors. And that would be the group that is the old timers. Anybody that's been around the block over 20 years that never dealt with cameras in the beginning of their career or have been retired and got re-engaged in law enforcement, this group doesn't have any tolerance level, and will not put up with this in a second. I've noticed that. And, you know, the old adage, it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. Boy, does that resonate with this group. And there's one specific video that I'm going to post on the show notes, and that is at um, the federal courthouse in Houston, with some U.S. Marshals. And I will tell you, you know, a lot of the guys, the Marshals, you know, they wear these suits. And uh, pretty much all the have same suit. Uh, brown, uh, what is it? Uh, a blue blazer, red tie, you know. So it almost looks like a uniform. And, um, you know, underneath there, they got the, the goods, you know, the gun the, and the handcuffs and all that other stuff. But um, they come out and challenge uh, an auditor, and uh, it becomes a pissing match and a, and a shouting match and an FU match. So the F-bombs were dropping left and right. And they didn't care they were being filmed or anything. Why? This is their second gig. They've already retired from another agency, and they picked up the U.S. Marshal gig for security of the courthouse. Pays well, don't do much, and when there's action, eh, act like the, uh, like the old days. They had a lot of trouble in this video, and one of the guys that's on a video was, I know who he is, he's a retired police officer from the city of Miami, he was involved in SWAT, the development of their training, and uh, let's just say there's movies named after him, so I won't mention who he is. But uh, for those that are retired from the city, they have a good idea. So 
he's over in Texas now, and he picked up a job as a, as a marshal. And he's engaged in there, too. It, it wasn't aggressive or anything. But uh, one of the auditors that picked up a buddy, it was a black guy, he picked up his uh, $1.99 camera, his phone, and started recording. And then told the um, to the black guy, the auditor tells um, the, the retired cops, or the marshals that are there, that the Houston Police Department know how to deal with this, and you guys don't. And this this guy from uh, retired from the city goes, well, what do they know? What do they know? They're, they're riding bicycles. What do they know about what to do? So there's a little detachment there. And um, every single one of those old-timers, back in their heyday, they knew how to handle that guy with the camera. But that you can't do that nowadays. So... The auditors are also seeking education. So I'm going to throw one up there. <clears throat> that that uh, It was uh, a pretty profound uh, case. Uh, it went very, I'm not going to say very well, because I really don't know their standards. But it, it's more on the educational level. So I'll throw that there. And then the last one is just a conniption. Um in some state building, and uh, it, it's it was just horrifying all the way around. And then my last one, I, I just had to put three, but I'm going to put one more, and this is a, a superior officer uh, meeting up with the patrol officers to deal with an auditor and how the superior officer does stupid crap that you wouldn't, you wouldn't allow your officers to do and you're doing. So there was a lack of leadership there. So we'll put that on there. And it's for your review. So, folks, the only way to fix what's broken, and I'm not saying change the the First Amendment. That's not what I'm saying. <clears throat> what's broken is that law enforcement and that's what we deal with here on this podcast. Not everybody's brought in to this audit that's going on. And that has to be across the board because the law is not changing anytime soon. So train, train well, train often as there's changes in the law. Take that as a lesson for law enforcement that people are looking if you've been in law enforcement for more than two weeks, you're a veteran. Do you know that as soon as you put on your uniform and go out into the public, people look at you all totally different. They stare at you and what you're doing in public areas. They look at you while you're eating. You know, you're highlighted so much. And so there's no excuse to not be ready for these events. Of course, they're always going to creep in, but we need to close the gap. We need to close that gap because the law enforcement profession needs it. You don't want scrutiny, and especially political scrutiny, from people that hate you, that want to erode your powers. You need to overcome, adapt. You know where you've heard that from, Gunny Highway, and that's what we need to do. And the only way to do it is through training, training and more training. And I think it should be mandated in all 50 states. Now the hate mail can start rolling on both sides, especially the police side. I ain't listening to him no more. He's a leftist. Because the bottom line is if you don't know or understand, it is a test question for promotion. The power of the state comes from the people. That's why it's we the people. It has been my honor and my pleasure to be your host on this show, Raider Cop Nation. As always, continue to pray for yourself because without you in the game, we have nothing. Pray for your family. Pray for your community. Pray for the law enforcement agencies that serve you. And most important, 
continue to pray for our great nation, the United States of America. This is Alpha Mike signing out. And guide her through the night with a light from above.